spot in the universe. Don't get too comfortable. This is a place where you will find those with an experience that's out of this world, or possibly deep within your life. I welcome you to the Oracles with James Tyson. Lean forward and listen. We will pull you into a supernatural journey with guests from around the world. Each one Experiencing some of the most extraordinary phenomena this wee plant has to offer. Now, here are the Oracles with James Tyson. Thank you, Liam, and thank you, listener, for tuning into this episode of the Oracles with James Tyson. It's me, James. Today's uh, going to start off with a bit of a somber note. We're talking about the COVID-19, the coronavirus. And I'm bringing in a friend of mine, Skeeter Wellhouse. Now, Skeeter's been working in in and around the paranormal field itself professionally for about seven years. She had an eclectic collection of experiences with various paranormal events and phenomena since she was a wee toddler and uh, has died a number of times (laughs) and come back. And every time she comes back, she seems to be cranked up a little bit. Our primary loves include past life work, necromancy, which is working with the dead and utilizing uh, ritual and magic and all the other woo-woo bits and pieces that go with that. Now, although recently she's had ET experiences and cryptozoological events, uh, those things have been going on most of her life but in the last couple of years have been really coming to her a lot and getting her attention she currently lives in maple valley washington her website is down right now she had a bit of a spiritual shutdown three or four months ago and uh, see things now have are starting to boil back to the surface which is quite common for people who are intuitive that they, they will have a, a shutdown we actually speak a bit about that the reason i asked her to come out is that in 2014 2015 we used to have a live internet radio show and every second sunday we would have a show called the shift and we talk about projecting and what is is believed to be coming for mankind and what the shift is and the shift we talked about back then was political change uh, internationally uh, the leaders of the world would be brought into positions where literally they would be splitting their countries in half the us against them uh, and, and we're not going to focus a lot on the US situation uh, and how the world perceives them back then we did talk about that we talked about it uh, in Australia we talked about it in Europe and we kind of saw where where that was going and reasons why we were put into these two split into two camps uh you want to call it left right blue red up down whatever you want to call it it was preparing us for something the world was shifting yes there is a polar shift the actual pole itself that used to be just above canada is now way off over top of uh, siberia so there is a physical shift which uh, again that affects weather patterns and we talked about severe weather back then too for us fires things that were coming because we as a society we felt and we discussed back then and we will discuss again tonight we as a society really needed to get back to living with the earth and not constantly just living off of it and we talk a lot about me versus we we talked about getting away from that idea where I everything I do is for me I'm the most important one this is what I own you can't have it this is all my money this is my stuff this is a wall around my property and I want a wall around my town and I want a wall about, around my state. And I want a wall around my country. Everything's me, 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 me. We'll see that in, in leaders going around the world as we move from the political pendulum swings to the more of the right side of things where everything is about either the leader, specific area they live in, or their country. And 
isolating themselves from the greater good, the, the greater mankind. And we talk a bit about that. We talk again back six years ago about viruses and influenzas. We talked about geological events uh, like we just had in Croatia a few days ago, quite an earthquake. We talked about off-season hurricanes and tornadoes. We talk a lot about all these god-awful disasters that were coming and projected to come and, and the reasons why. And also we talked about those in the population that aren't going to be affected. And those ended up being, the perception was the higher vibration people, those people we call empaths, the people that believe in, I always use this term, woo-woo. It's the woo-woo people. And this interview, while we're talking, you're going to hear us being a little flippant. And it comes across that we're joking around a lot because we have been talking about this for six years. It's just second nature to us to talk about it. And it's more of a, um, a sarcasm out of stress as we see things coming. Now, like any time you tune into the oracles and listen to me, you've got to already pull your chair up, understanding that there are ghosts and they exist. There are extraterrestrial beings. They do exist. There are angels. There are spirit guides. Reading cards for somebody is a way to connect to a spirit guide or some greater being that is wanting to pass information on at that time. That is the mindset you have to come into this conversation with because we skip through trying to talk you into it because we really don't have time for that. Ain't nobody got time to try to get you to believe in ghosts or believe in UFOs. I've seen UFOs. I've seen ghosts. I've heard ghosts. I talk back and forth to them. I read cards. I get information about people while reading cards. There's no way I'm supposed to know that. And I believe it. I believe in what I'm doing. So I've already got the belief system down. If you don't believe any of that, you're going to find what we're going to be talking about really hard to believe because we are going to be talking about aliens. We are going to talk be talking about mankind. In the first part of our interview, we talk about opening the door. This was something we talked about years ago where Skeeter actually goes out onto what she describes as a web. Uh, she does this kind of remote viewing it would be the easiest way to put it. She travels out to there and she sees all the different directions of the future has for us. And there are rough timelines. And we talk about how the future itself is very fragile. Some prophet could come forward saying, this is going to happen on this date. Well, if enough people concentrate on not making it happen, it may not. So we have some ways of changing what's happening. We've kind of screwed up. We've, uh, we're at a point in history where we have kind of went off track a little bit as humanity. And the shift itself is trying to get us back and get us back again, living with the earth not off of the earth. Providing dates for in prophecies is is not a firm forecast of what's to come. Again, because future is fragile and we have that crazy thing called free will and we can start changing the way we do things. We talk about being clairsentient, clairvoyant, all the clairs. Skeeter can see these threads on this web beyond humanity into extraterrestrial life, into angelic beings. In regards to the virus itself, the COVID-19, I ask her about its origin, see what information she gets from the other side on the origin of COVID-19. And it's not what you would expect. It's not what we thought, you know, a lot of people say, well, it's man-made. It was made by scientists in China, which I always could buy into because, you know, you've got the United States spending a trillion dollars on weapons of mass destruction for war, Russia doing the same thing. Well, if you don't want to spend that much money, you know, hire a couple of teachers who know biology and give them a Petri dish and told him to make something that'll kill everyone a lot cheaper. So I was kind of swung to the human side of this being made. But we talk about some other origin for COVID-19 and the reasons is coming up. But again, we always come back to me versus we. If we can now get ourselves into a we mentality that we are all doing something as a, for the greater good, or it's just not about me, we get my ego out of the way, maybe this would just go away. Or we can start working towards a better life for all of us as opposed to just putting a wall up around ourselves, getting an AR-15 and digging a bunker. Frankly, those people are going to kill themselves off. It's the ones who open their doors that'll do better. There are huge players, a number of players we talk about in different realms and in different political and socio structures that are affecting what we do in the world. You could call it uh, the one world government. You can call it you know, the black government. There's 
a whole bunch of players in here. And we get into how ETs or aliens may be interacting and what they're up to. And we also get into um, what could possibly happen. And one of the things that I've talked to some psychics about is is humans being taken off planet for food. That was the easiest way of saying it. A number of individuals over the last month, month and a half, have had dreams, have uh, prophesized, have been told through spirit that stuff like that could very well happen. And we were given a timeline on it. So we'll discuss that and see what Skeeter has to say about that timeline or if she even wants to broach that because uh, reptilians are a group of beings that she has actually had experience with. So buckle yourself in. This is a bit of a long one. So I would suggest it, you know, listen to it in 20 minute chunks or whatever you want throughout uh, a couple of days. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at info at the oracles with James Tyson. Tyson.com. Again, info at the oracles with James Tyson.com or go just to the website, so the oracles with James Tyson.com and uh, click on contact me. If you have any questions for Skeeter, we'll get them to you. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. And again, it's, it's not all um, roses and it's not all happy, feel good, but we try during the interview again, we're kind of flippant about it because we're just tired. We're tired of having to go over this over and over again and kind of hope you stick around for the rest of the journey here with us. Skeeter, how are you today? Good, James. How are you? I am well in this uh, self-imposed isolation time that we've got here. I did some vehicle distancing, social distancing via motorcycle Sunday and Monday because I traded my old motorcycle in on a brand new one and picked it up on Sunday after I got some modifications put on it. So I went out for a putter in the sunshine here and uh, yeah, it's great because you wear a mask basically and you're away from everybody else but you know it's still pretty busy out there I've gone to the stores and I've done my shopping as best I can I think I've, I've already been quite stocked up for a while I think I can bake bread for about six months without having to leave the house and except I die from eating bread um, <laughs> how are you what's it going what's it like in southern Washington state right now actually we're doing pretty well here I mean the schools are closed I have all the, the littles home some businesses are still going so I'm still going to work you know oddly enough it feels kind of normal if that makes sense you know where it doesn't become normal turning the TV on and watching the news or opening social media if you don't do either of those it's just a normal day it's like <laughs> nothing has really changed yeah my neighbor well, just got a load of meat delivered to the house uh, it's an interesting it's interesting time Skeeter and we talked about stuff like this going back to around 2014 2015 in a thing that we used to call the shift where yeah. a lot of stuff was predicted and we discussed yep. one of the things we, we we used to discuss was how politicians around the world would get into places of power that would uh, almost split their countries in half. Yep. In your case, that was three years before an election. In the case of Australia, we actually talked about them going a lot further right wing in their political sense, like their politicians. And I just heard that their prime minister the other day uh, basically said, you know, if you're an immigrant and you don't like Australia, doors open, you can leave. Does that sound familiar? Um, yeah. yeah. And, you know, things like that. And uh, we talked about um, severe weather and fire, a lot of forest fires and things like years before they became a fad. And we talked about <laughs> viruses and things that could, you know, are, were basically leading to almost a cull of mankind, which brings us up to this COVID-19 however the heck yes. it may have started and where it fits in to the shift and what we had been talking about for a long time but one of the things i want my listener to understand a little bit about you is about who you are and what makes you somebody that I come to to discuss these things, as well as a number of other people uh, over the time that I've known you are drawn to you for your opinion based on your contact with, we'll call it the other side. Now, you and I have also traveled to places like in Los Angeles and Pasadena and, and to UFO conferences and have had experiences um, 
within the supernatural, paranormal, metaphysical side of things from doing a, a regression a, a channel to somebody who brought me through a regression back June of last year to find that my primary spirit guide was actually me, which is a whole other episode. The, uh, <laughs> the but the uh, which was fascinating. Oh yeah, you're your higher self. Who's your higher self? Oh my God, it's my spirit guide. Holy crap, it's an ET. Okay, this is going sideways, but it totally made sense. And then you know we I've been there when you've been taking people through regressions of lost time they've had during an ET experience and them coming out of it with this clear memory of exactly what had happened. Stuff that, of course, they would never have known and you would not have known because you don't know who these people are. These are literally people in off the street. And don't disclose a lot of information to you when before they start, but by the end of it, you've known, <laughs> you basically know everything about them and they haven't told you, which is really cool for those people yeah. who don't believe in this kind of woo-woo. Years ago, we talked about a thing that you do, and we'll get into that. It's called opening the door, but tell my listener exactly what type of modalities that you're gifted with and how they've all come to where they are this time in our history. I actually have all the clear attendants from clear audience, the clear visual, the, the touch, the all of them. Also, I have what I call the ability to see the web. It all the threads and all the all the timelines that make up our daily lives, past, present, future, and not just like humans, but like in a far greater scheme, something even beyond ourselves. A lot of times, all I have to do is just touch someone and I get a download of information on them. That's normally why you see me with my hands in my pockets. I try not to have a lot of physical contact with people because of the heavy downloads I can get sometimes. In fact, that's one of my favorite bar tricks is to go, well, here, give me your hand and I'll tell you about you. And then people get freaked out by the time I get to the middle finger. That's halfway through. <laughs> I do have a gift for seeing the future. I do not do a lot of future readings. Um, James, you know that about me. I tend to be very cautious about future readings because I don't want to mess up what's coming or manipulate it in any way. People don't realize how fragile the future really is. I don't know. Am I leaving anything out? I mean, between ET communication, being able to talk to the dead, being able to talk to higher spirit guides, being able to talk to various energy forms that we would consider deities or angels or, or demons or gods. You've got There's a, a like, lot. Yeah, there is a lot. And for the years I've known you, and we we could do an episode on each of those little modality things like you know let's talk to demons for an hour what are demons what are elemental beings we get off on those tangents because i have my own opinion and you have yours because you actually see them yeah. <laughs> and and for those who don't know skeeter dies a lot so but she's better now uh, how many yeah. times have you died five six now or five five or six five yeah. i think five is i think the number we tapped out at yeah, we, t we tapped out at sick, or five, yeah, <laughs> cracking your head open. And and we joke about that, but a lot of very, very connected psychics or mediums connected to the woo-woo, to the universe, have died a few times. And every time they come back, they've been reset. And Skeeter keeps dying and coming back cranked up. Her abilities are, are really cranked up. And, it, and unfortunately, not only you have to go through the quote-unquote death experience, but you have to deal with the new abilities. And uh, some of it... So overwhelming obviously and having to juggle that and going what the heck is going on with my head i've met some people who have suffered one particular person a friend of mine who is uh, medically diagnosed as being bipolar and suffers from depression i did a reading for her the other day and this is why i'm not naming or, or would never name this person anyway but when i when i finished the reading i realized what every time she plateaued in that depression she came back and her vibration was tons higher her connection to source was amazingly higher and it wasn't that she had to die like some people do she would just have to get a point to her life where she got hit this horrible depression and when she came out of it she ascended does that make sense that was it does. yeah they're totally fascinating so there are people out there who don't you know we look at some people who are who have these medical conditions or you feel, you know, oh my God, you go into a deep depression. And they, when they come out of that deep depression, it's not like, okay, you've, you, you bounce back, you're feeling good again. If someone had known that person prior to that depression, they would see them as actually being a lot of a higher vibration than they were prior. But people who know them think, oh, she's back to normal. 
quote unquote. It's like yeah. it, it, they're not back to normal. They're back to normal plus. And this yeah. continues in steps throughout their lives. You know, again, if they've chosen to come out of that depression and continue through a healthy lifestyle and, you know, drink, you know, and, and not terminate themselves or not check out during the depression. It's very, very interesting. And I know, again, from my reading that she's not really from here anyway. She's a uh, off earth kind of person. You know, and if More you, than likely. Yeah, and if you met her, you'd know. You'd look at her and go, "Holy crap! You're not from around here." Uh, definitely an <laughs> off Earth person. But Skeeter, we talked about years ago. Again, going back to the shift. This is me crinkling paper because I have notes. You do a thing, and uh, we talk. You know, you talk about all the clairs that you have. You do a thing, and it was called opening the door, where you literally step into the web. Yeah. And w- what is it you see when you? when you step onto the web. And I mean this in, in to do with like because of the future outcomes. I'm going to get into, you believe there's like two or three future outcomes for everything and you can see them once you step out into the web. Yeah, it depends on where I step in. I mean, since September, October-ish of last year, it's no longer opening the door. I'm just there. It's been really fascinating. But it's literally, it's like you're standing on a very fine thread and that fine thread It's like watching a television show through a test tube. You can see everything going on. You can see beaches. You can see tanks. It's kind of like watching an old political newsreel from the 1950s playing on the silver screen. Okay. It's really kind of bizarre how intense it's gotten October, September. Um, Before, it used to be kind of like getting flashes of information and being able to follow these threads to different pinpoints. Usually just two or three outcomes used to be all that I'd be allowed to see. Now I can actually see far more outcomes and I can see far more little threads tied to it. This is why I'm even more hyper aware of how people's actions and behaviors because what people don't realize is that their everyday reaction or lack of reaction can actually shape the future, not just for themselves, but for the greater community. Me and you used to talk a lot about, well, what about these plagues? What about what we would call almost an apocalyptic theme? I was always really nervous because you were always trying to be like, how soon, how soon? And I'd be like, oh, you got time, you got time. And now I'm sitting there going, "Um, James, welcome to the shift. Uh, we're there. Uh. <laughs> oh, Lord. I, I did the same thing. October. It's funny you said October, September. October, September, I was talking to her friend, Marianne Morgan, the psychic, out of the stage. And she said, off air, she said, okay, I, I need you to, you know, I want you to go to the store. And every time you go there, buy some extra toilet paper and buy, like, flour and sugar and salt and things for baking. And if you do any canning, maybe start looking, you know, get canned goods. Every time you go, just buy a little bit extra fill that pantry up and do you have any seeds do you have any vegetable seeds do you have an area where you can plant a garden and i'm going yeah, yeah okay fine whatever so you know and then i talked to her uh, in november oh yeah and, and then it would come up again well have you started your little pantry have you filled up your basement with the survival gear and i'm like okay marianne what's going on oh it's so gonna be okay don't worry you're gonna be fine and blah, blah. and so i Talked to her, she phoned me last week and she said, So, how's it going? And I went, You, you, you could have kicked me in the ass a little bit better on the toilet paper part, but um, <laughs> but we're good with toilet paper. It's all. But it was funny when you said October, September, I went, Oh, crap. Yeah, that's exactly what was <laughs> what was going on. And, and your abilities, you started getting a lot more clearer messages back then. Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but I actually shut down shortly after October. I even tried doing a reading for you and it I I couldn't force it and what was shutting me down it actually flustered the hell out of me I've actually gone through my own really dark depression a lot of people don't know that I isolated I didn't even really talk to you James no yeah you were um, gone yeah I I shut down my business I stopped doing readings I went through what I call a, a re-shattering which has been hard on my family um It's whatever clicked um, September, October, it literally opened the door to the shift. Yeah. 
Now, and, and for those of you who follow me on Patreon, where we give away uh, psychic readings and past life regressions and astrological charts, Skeeter has been um, like one of the primary psychics in there. And we had to have her covered off by some really, really fantastic people who do psychic like marianne morgan and uh others who do the past life regressions and laurianne lothan doing the astrology charts but you know the gifting had been has been stopped for january february and we we're gonna pick it up again as it comes but you know these are the reasons it's like everything in the last few months has really come to a bit of a boiling point Uh, when i say boiling i see it as almost like everything boiling and everything like water shaking in a bucket but it is going to calm down but right now we're just trying to ride the waves out it's really weird because right now for me it is finally starting to calm it's like all of a sudden i'm like oh <laughs> oh yes i okay this all makes sense <laughs> i know where i'm at i know i had to go through what i had to go through i know there's more ahead of me but the thing is, is that we're here at this great big moment in time and I know you said earlier if you're watching the news, if you're watching social media, anyone who knows me, I really can't watch television, I can't really watch movies, they try to keep me off social media, being able to read news feeds, I'll post stuff on social media to let people know hey, there's this energy or be happy or I try to post as much as possible, if I'm not posting it means they're really keeping me isolated. And by they keeping me, it's it's something bigger than human. Yeah. It's like something celestial puts me in a big bell jar and goes, nope. Not your job. Nope, nope, nope. Well, also, they like, um, when we were at Alien Con this last summer, um, there was a gentleman there who is known as being one of the first really heavily documented abductees. Yes. Um, he was two tables behind us, if I remember correctly. Um, was that um, Travis Walton? Yes, I believe so. And I had no clue who he was. I felt bad because he was a little insulted that I didn't know who he was. Yeah. And when I explained why I didn't know who he was, he started laughing and going, oh, you're one of those. You're one of those <laughs> pure sources. And I'm like, what? And he goes, that's all, and walked off. And I'm like, <laughs> Wait, what do you mean I'm a pure source? (laughs) Travis is kind of fun. His abduction was back in the 70s, but if you talk to him, he's actually had another one in 2014. And he kind of talks about it when you sit down with him for a bit. But he is a lot more connected than people think he is. They think he's, oh, he was just a guy who worked in a logging camp when he was a teenager and got taken up in a UFO. So do I believe that or not? There's a lot of reasons he's had ET contact throughout his life. Now, he's a little higher uh, on the food chain vibration wise than uh, people people would understand oh definitely because I knew I was drawn to him I kept kind of following him with my eyes and I think he thought at first I was a fan or or knew who he was but it was just or a stalker it, yeah <laughs> yeah but it was just his energy I mean it was just vibing so high that for someone like me it was like seeing a strobe light it was just amazing to see that energy just blaring and then I felt so bad because he was like, oh, you're a fan. And I'm like, I have no clue who you are. I am so sorry. <laughs> amazing, amazing gentleman. But um, they do. They do try to keep me very pure and very out of the main circles so that the human part of me can't feed off of what's going on. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I know that when we, when you do have these times of your life where you're shut down, Um, It's been explained to me and pointed out in hindsight that when your clairs get all shut down, it forces you to open up another channel that you haven't tapped into yet. And Mm -hmm. it's them saying, okay, you've got all these clairs. You've always fallen, you know, back on the easy stuff. Things are going to happen now and we need you to open this conduit up. So you come back and you've got this new conduit going, oh, crap, because you've been forced to use that and fight kind of that because all your other clairs are gone. They've just been turned off for a bit. Yeah, and that's been really annoying. And it has forced me to look at things a new way because, like, when I astral, I'm used to just popping in going, oh, there's your table, there's the wall, there's a door, oh, look, there's some spirit. And the last few astrals I've done, it has been really off. It was like, 
like, okay, I know how to ride a bike. Why is it that all of a sudden I can't ride a bike anymore? I know, I know how. What I'm actually seeing isn't the past anymore or even the present. It's future images of what's going to hit that house. Jeez. So, so d- to put it in my in perspective, you and I would do this thing where uh, somebody might phone up and say, hey, there's this, I think there's a ghost in my house, a lady in a blue dress is seen at the top of the stairs. I would talk to them, get kind of a figure out, you know, this is legit or not. And then we would phone you and bring you in on the phone call. And you haven't heard anything that was going on. You then would take a deep breath, show up astrally in the house, describe walking in the front door, what the entire house looked like, where the person was on the phone. There's three First Nations people sitting at the table in, in spirit. And there's a lady in a blue dress on the top of the stairs. Who do you want me to talk to? And at that point, usually the client or my friend or whoever this is and myself would hack and then you would we would then interview the ghost the ghost the person who has not crossed over through you but that was specific to the time we were having a conversation so you did see the house the way it was i know you did you did a uh, documentary with us where the lady who actually took you into this area that is now a legion, like a Army and Navy Air Force kind of thing, a pub, when she brought you, as a, she in spirit, took you through as the guide, but she showed you what it was prior to that, which was confusing yeah. everybody because they're going, okay, yeah, there is a kitchen there, but it didn't extend into this part up until 1940. So this lady was showing you 1930s. Yeah. And then it took another guy to come and go, no, 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 let, let, I'll show her what's here now. And he showed you and everything else opened up and it made sense. Um, because, of course, we didn't tell you where we were. We didn't describe anything until. Uh, but it was kind of confusing when, what do you mean, this lady, in the, the cook is bringing you out. The cook doesn't work here anymore. She hasn't worked here since the 30s. So you were seeing different timelines of the exact same location. So what you're saying now is when you do an astral projection into a house, you'll get to the house, but you're you're given a future view of the property. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yep. Okay, can you still see? Like, I still want to use you for getting ghosts out of people's <laughs> houses. But it's like, <laughs> but if you can't do that, oh, I'm kind of screwed for an astral uh, psychic to help clear ghosts for free. No, I, it or not. It's, no, it's coming back. It is actually coming back. It's just when um, we did the one together, me and you did the one together, I was really, really, really getting flustered because I'm like, no, I'm at the right property. I'm at the right location. Location. I see the lady, but everything I was seeing, I'm like, why isn't this making sense? Why isn't this making sense? Now it makes sense because I'm seeing future. So now I, that I realize what I'm seeing, I can reach out now to one of those other threads in the house. This is this is part of the reason why the shift is such a big deal right now for me. Is because I can now shift back and go, oh, I'm on a future thread. I am going to step back and down or to the left or wherever that past thread is and see this home where it is. So it's actually learning to, for lack of a better word, shuffle time. Okay. And you're so, actually, you're learning how to to deal with the cards that you've been um, given when the time shuffles. Yeah. In your gifts, in what's going on now, you know, you're bouncing around on a staircase. I, I picture, you know, that uh, th- optical illusion, three-dimensional kind of drawing. It's called Schroeder's Stairs. It's, uh, yes, that's exactly the best <laughs> example you could give. Yeah, it's like all mixed <laughs> up. Like, you, you, you know, each step goes into a different direction, back into itself. As you're out wandering that, what are you seeing now in the shift? And could you, for my listener too, could you give your definition of the shift? The shift is a major period of time where humans can either wake the hell up or be shut down. Politically speaking, environmentally speaking, socially speaking, it's a major point of time. Think asteroid for the dinosaurs. Think think of back in the 500 when there was an ice age caused by both volcanic and asteroid that caused a major shift. Um, we had the Dark Ages leading into the Age of the Renaissance. That's kind of where we're at, where humans are going through a major period of darkness, self-inflicted. Yes. Ironically, this time it's like self-inflicted. 
and we have an opportunity, just as we did in the Dark Ages, to come to a point of enlightenment and go into a new renaissance, or we can slowly begin to watch ourselves become the next dinosaurs. That's kind of um, what we're getting at. Yeah, the way I feel it, too. The shift is that door and they're sitting on the thread as I am it's like I catch glimpses of things and it's like I find myself literally holding my breath going please 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 stop thinking of yourself and what's in it for you and think about the greater good think about the greater whole and I catch a glimpse of that thread going from where it was and it doesn't even have to be a massive change, a massive shift. It just goes a little bit in the right direction. And I'm like, yay! Because if any of you have ever been in a math class and done graphing, even a one degree change can send that thread off in a completely different direction. However, there's times that I'm also watching that thread and it goes the wrong way, and I'm like, oh, darn. Um, <laughs> I just, I want to scream because it's like the biggest thing about the shift is humans are being called to reach outside of themselves. I mean, I know we're in isolation right now, but at my job, I work at a fabric shop. And yesterday, we had hundreds of customers face-to-face, as well as hundreds of online orders for fabric for masks. People everywhere are making masks to donate to doctors, veterinarians, dentists, uh, medical support people for people who are doing preschool for um, or daycare for our first responders who who can't stay home with their kids. People are making masks to help each other out. There was one lady making masks for all the the people in her nursing home. Even though everyone was going home back to their their individual sewing machines and isolating um, with the thousands of pieces of fabric they brought, they were still looking out for each other. They were still thinking about each other. They were doing things to help enlighten and enrich each other. Our school system where my daughter is right now is offering free meals. You don't even have to be on the free meal system. As long as you are 18 or under, all you have to do is show up. It's a walk-through or drive-through system where you just kind of pull up, they hand you the bag, and you go. Ironically, despite the fact that, I mean, we're seeing it in Italy. There's a viral video out there where there's a gentleman who's singing an aria from an opera, and a lady a couple balconies down joins in, and the next thing you know, somebody's playing an instrument, and they've got these viral videos of, of these communities singing together and performing together, even though they're isolated. And you've never seen that before. On the other hand, you have individuals who are thinking only about themselves. Yep. And when you see the stuff, like I saw, like the Italy and the mass and all that, you see that line just shift that one degree and you're like, yes, there's hope. There's hopes. We're going to be enlightened. And then you see the, the the guy who is thinking all about himself and what's good for his bank account. And you watch that line shift one degree to the other way. And you're like, why? The big thing behind the shift, this is why what happened to me in September is such a big deal. It really opened up to me why the shift is what it is. I'm actually very grateful to my daughter's father right now because he's... Um, ironically, for the first time in our relationship, he's actually stepped up to help me through one of these. And humans need to realize this is not a me society. This is not a money society. Money makes it a me society. I'm sorry. It does. It is a we society. There was a woman who dropped several hundred dollars in fabric yesterday, all to make masks for free to donate to the local hospital. That is someone who was seeing the greater we. It didn't matter about the money. It mattered about helping people who needed the help. And we need this shift. It's all about going from a me 
to a we. And I don't care how you perceive the me. As long as you're thinking only about yourself, you're going to be pushing that thread in that not so enlightened direction. And that's where I think a lot of people don't understand. We we have to connect the awakening, this quote unquote awakening of somebody, uh, somebody becoming more spiritual, somebody opening to the idea that it's bigger than the individual. And those people have been really sparkling for about 15 years now, but they're continuing to awake and it's coming faster. And then there were people like, um, well, I was told after 2000, November, 2012, when I, that spark was pointed out to me that my goal was to point it out to other people yep. who then would point it out to other people who then would point it. So the ripple effect, and it's just not me, it's millions and millions of other people on earth pointing these things out to other people and we see and and again you know we'll go back to the political shift globally uh you know everybody craps on the u.s uh, because that's it's just the big noisy one but you know you really are getting an idea of those who want to put a wall around the country want to put a wall around the state the city and their house this is mine. You cannot come in. I will not share with you. So what we're doing is like the shift is pointing out, oh, those people. Yeah, they're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> and these people over here who have the door open and don't have a fence and don't have a wall, they're probably going to stay. And we talked about, again, going back years ago, talking about this, our show was live and people would phone in and a lady phoned in one day and she was uh, we talked and you were talking about um, collecting seeds and saving seeds up for vegetables and, you know, for whatever, put them on the back shelf just in case. And she phoned in and said, well, what happens when my neighbor or somebody comes and says, and I have to give him all my seeds? And I said, the first thing you have to understand is they're not yours. And as soon as you can get through your head that they were our seeds, you took the right step forward. So when the guy shows up at your door with his family who is starving saying, give me all your seeds, you first, instead of standing there with an assault rifle, taking he and his kids out at the doorstep, you realize that, you know what, he could probably fix my roof. His wife and the kids could probably plant a lot more of these seeds and we could probably get a higher yield if we all work together as a community. That is the person that will survive as opposed to the person with the AR and the barricade or the bunker in Montana. Those people are going to deal with things themselves and then they will be culled from society. And it's yeah. not, it, it can be, we talked about things like civil war, you know, you having uh, countries coming, drawing a line, half the country is for one belief system, the other half is for another belief system, the, the left, the right, the up, the down, the whatever you want to put it, and then bringing that to a civil war. But the other thing is, too, is that we have this thing, the universe is sending us all sorts of little indications that there are people that have to leave. Maybe it's not really your time to leave, but you know, it's better that you go now. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce a virus or we're going to introduce a uh, geological event like happened in Croatia the other day. News in your own neighborhood. You know, there was... These aren't necessarily meant to call people. This is... This is a call out to people. I mean, if we actually work together as a community, these things wouldn't be as devastating. I mean, you think about it. If people went, if if we were looking at the other countries and seeing where the countries that had done the absolute shutdowns and their bell curves at least stopped rising, they just topped out, plateaued, and we self-isolated instead of, you know, going to spring break or insisting that this was a vacation, not a lockdown. The bell curve would have already dropped. Well, you know, the numbers wouldn't be going. If we reached out to Puerto Rico and said, you know what, this is important. Yeah, this is these are other humans. Let's get them back online. If we reached out to these other places, if we paid more attention to the fires in the Amazon, if we paid more attention to the fires in Australia, instead of looking at our bottom dollar and what are we going to get out of it or not my backyard, not my business, these wouldn't have to be cold. It would be an opportunity to step into solidity, a solid human existence. 
it wouldn't be James, you're Canadian and I'm American. It would be James, you're my friend, and that's all there is to it. Yeah, the the border, like, well, our border is invisible. I can go to the Washington State British Columbia border, and it's on one, the one side of the road. We don't have a wall. Uh, yeah, we built one actually after the election. No, that's a whole other story. The um, <laughs> <laughs> just to keep the, the the people fleeing the country out. Uh, but the it's it is an interesting time when we come to working together. And I think the things like the virus, COVID-19, has shown us who can play nice with other people. Yeah, so it shows us who is willing to gamble other people's lives to line their own pockets. Oh, let's not bring the Senate up again. Um, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah there, there are definitely people who are looking to benefit. Talk to the governor of New York right now and him having to uh, bid on supplies against other states like oh how many ventilators do you have okay how much are they well i'll pay you more than than new jersey's paying or whatever yeah that's not really how this works it's uh no you, you get the stuff that you get it's like it's, uh who needs it more you know getting down to it, it's almost like i'm sick and you're sick but i'm not as sick as you so i'm going to support you it's not yeah. like oh, i'm really sick oh woe is me i want everything i want all the toilet paper for some reason I literally, I, I almost, I almost videotaped this kid. She was in a Walmart. She l unloaded the entire shelf of canned food into a shopping cart. It was overflowing. Then loaded what she could on top of it in Gatorade. She was wearing rubber gloves and a mask and a toque or a beanie, if you're not from my country. And then videotaping the whole thing and posting it saying, oh, look what I got. And this is what I did. I've got like four gallons of Gatorade. And I'm looking at her going, and there's other people with like little hand cart, like little hand basket, walking down the aisle thinking they might want some soup. And she's got all of it. <laughs> And I'm looking at her like, you are you are first to go. <laughs> like, you've got to leave this planet at this point because you aren't playing nice with others. But at least you're posting it on Instagram. So that's kind of cool. Good for you and your friends. Hopefully they can all come yeah. over to your house and, and eat all the food. Uh, you know, a healthy 20-something. Well, I, you know, that, that's, that's bad for me. I shouldn't say she was healthy because I don't know. She may have an immune system deficiency and was starving who the heck knows and somehow got seven hundred dollars for groceries but um yeah that was kind of odd that was a really odd thing thank god now that they're they're actually limiting you know what kind of staple supplies you get but my goodness it was uh that was that was my first in-person event where i'm looking at somebody saying this is a cartoon this isn't real this this person shouldn't be doing this and you know i was very critical but very quietly critical because you know canadian <laughs> yeah sorry well, you know, the, uh, the funny thing is is my observation so far is that people who actually understand what's going on are being very reasonable me and my family for example we had a $400 budget, and we knew we needed to make food for four weeks. And we knew that we would need to put a little bit of money aside to get things that need to be replenished, fresh vegetables, stuff like that. We went New Mexico style. We got beans that were uncooked, not in a can. We got rice. Um, we got some basic canned goods. We got the staples. We got things that should something happen, we could lock down and be okay for a couple of weeks, even if we couldn't go outside for fruits and fresh fruits and vegetables. We understood that there were other humans who would need these things. So I got only what I needed that I knew could sustain me for X amount of time. I could understand a little bit of a every man for themselves, but out of all honesty, James, if you had a whole bunch of kidney beans and I had a whole bunch of rice, I'd be knocking on your door with my little mask and hold up a little sign so you can see me through your peephole going, <laughs> I have five bags of, of rice. Could you trade me five bags of beans? That that would be the time to set up a community. You know, I've got this. Can anybody trade me for this? There's all sorts of things you can do. We're talking a lot about self-preparedness. Tell me, with your metaphysical side of you, where do you think this virus came from and how long it's going to be around? There's me giving you a timeline again that you hate using? <laughs> um, honestly, I think it's been 
sitting for a lot longer than we've actually been aware of it. I don't think it's come from any particular country. I think it's been sitting in multiple countries, just kind of waiting to get a foothold. It's almost like, you know, anybody who has any kind of medical issue knows that if you're really stressed, if you're if you're sick and something else comes, it makes it easier for that something else to take hold. And over this winter, we have had some very, very, very stressful situations. Um, every country has experienced it. Australia had the fires. Here in the States, we had our impeachment hearings, which divided up the people a lot. We've had a lot. There's been a lot going on that has really, really stressed people out. And one of the things that really affects your immune system is stress. And I think this was just waiting for people to get stressed enough to take a foothold. And I think that's why it was able to spread so quickly is that so many people were already exposed to it to such an extent that it just needed us to be stressed out enough to show. Just our immune system dropping down to the point where it could actually grab a hold. Now, it's yep. funny, you know, I shouldn't say it's funny. I have a tenant here who every day is keeping score. Uh, she goes on the Internet and says, okay, the U.S. Is, is now into fourth place. It used to be in third place uh, for the amount of viruses. Italy's in first. Spain's in second, whatever. What are you talking about? Oh, there's only, you know, a few thousand more today. Well, that's out of a, a population of multi-millions. It's not a lot, but you got to really understand that that's only the people that were tested and tested yeah. positive. How many millions of people are got the sniffles and staying home or have various limited symptoms of COVID-19. It's not really affecting them, but they're infected. So you can't really say, oh, there's only 2,000 people in this country that have it. No, there's thousands of others that have it. Those are the only people who've been tested. Well, also, they've pointed out that not everybody is genuinely reporting all the numbers. I mean, they're mostly focusing on death. Yeah. And they're sure. not reporting the fact that there's a lot of young, healthy people in the hospital right now with COVID. I think the youngest person in the U.S. was five years old. Yep. Well, reported anyway. But, you yeah, know, if you want to go to a place where there is no virus, go to North Korea because they haven't reported they it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Greenland and North Korea, two safest places on the planet. It's kind of odd. Now, we're, uh, again, using your woo-woo side of your brain. Is this virus man-made is it off planet or is it uh, just a function of two little bugs getting together and liking each other i don't feel it coming from something man-made honestly well, that's gonna, the first response that's, that's gonna screw brain, up all the conspiracy theorists well that's okay i'm used to doing that <laughs> um <laughs> a lot of the times when i see this it's been really funny when you huh. asked me the first response was off planet yeah. I know a lot of people are saying this is this is animal related. I know one local physician has pointed out that it's very similar to the equine flu that went down through the southwest and I think it was maybe five years back, maybe further than that, that caused all the horse shows and everything to shut down down there. It is very similar to something that would transfer from one organism to another. So we automatically assume that it's coming from our animals, either domesticated or wild, coming into humans. The thing is, though, organic is organic. We're not the only organic thing in this universe. And also there are organic things even on this planet that we don't know yet. And even our classification system has had to be slowly challenged, updated, and adjusted to allow for things that we are learning through DNA testing, a much more better understanding of microbiotics, microzoology. We're learning a lot more because of technology. I almost feel like we're in that stage of of everybody's like, no, 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 we're not, we're not advancing. We're, it's, this is the way it is. This is the way it's always been. And there's individuals out there going, no, there's more to this than we know. We need to have an open mind about this and stop trying to 
declassify or or get rid of it. I mean, they're even finding out that museums were destroying skeletons of things because we didn't want our way of thinking challenged. That's mm-hmm. how things like this COVID-19 get out because we don't want to think outside of our boxes and we don't want anything to challenge our thinking. I don't really think this is human made and I don't really think it's from our animals. Something yeah. a bit more complicated and I really think it has more to do with the destruction of this planet that's allowed this little bubble, this little thing to pop and go. And the fact that everybody's stress has given it the foothold it needs to do its thing. Yeah. I mean, out it, of all honesty, I've met some amazing people who are just the chillest people on the planet hasn't touched them it's funny there's uh people that you know have it you wouldn't expect it like um, our prime minister's wife who's kind of this mellow lady uh tom hanks and his wife i think people can get it and just get over it and there's some people who just can't and that are our carriers and pass it on to those who should be affected by it now two or three years ago there was a scientist out here at university of british columbia here in canada curtis subtle he uh, was one of the senior authors on a paper in the International Society for Microbiology Ecology, uh, their journal. And uh, about 20 years prior to that, they began finding genetically similar viruses occurring in very different environments all around the globe. And it pushed them into the study of bacteria coming and viruses uh, are being deposited uh, per square meter, I think they measured it um, above the planetary boundary layer, about 25 viruses um, for each person in Canada, of like 30 million people, you get 25 viruses each of that amount. There's 8 million viruses are deposited every day mm-hmm. coming in <laughs> through the planetary boundary layer, which is, you know, just coming up in space. And a lot of this stuff, I think, too, is honestly, when the wind blows, it all goes airborne and lands again. So you may be looking at the same viruses again and again and again you know, every time something happens it, you know it gets humid they come up or whatever anyway i think there's some change on the earth but that's a crap load of bugs that are floating around there and like you say they could they could just be here waiting we've got people totally stressed out okay let's uh remind them of what's cap what's happening here i think we're gonna make a few a few of them sick people have been going on the news globally saying you know it's not as bad as the spanish flu like like, I think 20 million people died in the Spanish flu. Uh, your president today said 100 million, but he was off by 80. Uh, but 20 million people died uh, when the Spanish flu hit, which was actually kind of an odd flu, too, because it, it hit uh, among sailors. They were coming to shore. I think in Massachusetts, that's the first U.S. ones. They came in from boats docking there. And then we kind of spread from there. And the rest of them, I think, were in in India about the same week or the same day. They landed uh, in ships there and hit Bombay and it went through. So it seemed to have uh, occurred somewhere in the water or out. uh, And these sailors were getting it, whatever caused that. But that that was a kick in the ass. And that was Mm -hmm. a system that wasn't ready to to obviously take on that many sick, healthy people at once. And I think the sick, healthy people is what scares more of the population when you think, uh, yes, the elderly and the really young could get it. But, you know, the elderly and young die of the common flu all the time. It's the healthy people in between. Uh, When it starts affecting them, then it gets our attention. It gets us off our flipping couch and away from the TV going, hmm, I think I'm going to need some toilet paper and bread. But at least it's getting the attention. And I think it's one of these things, Skeeter, that we've talked about in The Shift that is meant to get our asses off the couch and get our attention. Whether it's, it's source creator universe god related or it's thanks to an et intervention they're trying to get our attention too because they're trying to look after this little blue rock we're spinning on too and they've been interfering with or inter interjecting their opinion in a lot of the stuff humanity's done over time whether it's making sure we don't nuke each other and helping with a little bit better technology but uh, you know are they trying to get our attention too and this is why I wanted you to tune into your woo woo side and find out yeah okay if it's coming off planet is is it coming organized off planet 
or is it disorganized off planet? Is this something that's always been there well, or is it like, okay, today it, we have to flick the switch? It was something that was planted there. This really has to do with the melting ice cap. Remember, a lot of the shift had to do with the polarity and the poles. The more and more we crank up the temperature on our planet, yes, some people are complaining that it's colder than it used to be. Well, guess what happens? If you have a massive hot streak somewhere, it's going to cause a massive cold streak. Go into the desert. It's really freaking hot in the middle of the day, and it's really freaking cold in the middle of the night. It, it's the way it works. There's a whole lot of science behind it. I don't have the mentality to go through it right now. Um, the polar caps have been melting, and scientists have been going, um, guys, we need to pay attention to this because there's all these new viruses and new bacteria and all these things that have been frozen up here that are getting out, that are riding in little bits of because that's what happens when ice melts and water evaporates and it goes up into the atmosphere and believe it or not when it's up in the atmosphere it can move around the globe quite comfortably without us asking for a passport and then it rains down and then it goes into our water system and guess what we just happen to drink water and we just happen to grow food with it and we just happen to rely on water for a lot of things and the bacteria gets moved one of the big things about the shift was us paying attention to these little global cues of the caps melting, the fires, all the earthquakes going on, of which some are, are actually provoked by man mm -hmm. and some of the things that men are doing. In fact, a lot of it is provoked by what men are doing. And a lot of it is out of that me mentality. That's why it's so important to flip that me into a we. If people don't understand that, but about 15, uh -huh. 90, 1600, hundred the polar the magnetic pole was basically uh, around right above Canada basically was touching Canada the north the quote-unquote North Pole 2020 it is over top of Siberia it has gone thousands of miles north over the yep. Bering Sea and out into you know basically into the, the polar ice cap but straight up over top of Siberia it's not around here anymore if you live in this part of the world, you'll understand that there are glaciers that are receding. It's not as fast as they were at one point, but they, they go into these little spurts. What is under those, which is a lot of fun sometimes you find like a mastodon or something, but there is a lot of dirt that hasn't been exposed to human beings for ever. And uh, you say, well, yeah, it's not a big deal. And the Skeeter says there's all sorts of bugs in there, bacteria, viruses, whatever. But when I was in the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, there was I was working in an area in Alberta, Canada. Canada, a huge farming area. It was all farms. And myself and another guy were from the coast and he got allergies. And his doctor told him it was most likely from the tilling of the soil in these areas that hadn't been farmed for 100 or 200 years. As they turned the soil, it was exposing bacteria and pollens to the atmosphere that he had no immune system to. Because this type of bug, this type of uh, plant has never been in his life. It would be like going to another planet and then becoming allergic to the clover. Whatever was growing there naturally, he had a, a basic Anglo immune system dumped in a prairie way north of the 49th parallel that was uh, exposing a new, new microbes to his system. So, yeah, at 30 years old, he's never had an allergy, but all of a sudden he develops one? Well, yeah, because you've never, your body has never been around this and it doesn't have an immune system to them. This is an immune system you may have had uh, for people who lived here 100, 200 years ago. But, yeah, you're new, buddy. You're going to get it. Very interesting things that happen when you start digging around or flipping the earth, or, and not the earth itself, but the earth on the earth, like ground, dirt. When you start flipping it, you start digging into things. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that has been dormant for a thousand years or under, um, under the, uh, the ice. You know, it's been dormant for a hundred thousand years and now it's poking its head out again. Yeah. Interesting to see what kind of little plants grow up. Uh, at the base of a glacier that's retreating, but uh, yeah, it's it. Stuff's happening, Skeeter. Definitely, nope. stuff's happening. And it's just the beginning. In, in your <laughs> woo-woo opinion, you uh, the shift is a good thing, isn't it? For me, yeah, it's entertaining. 
Um, <laughs> no, I mean for the Earth, it's a good thing. It's a no, cleanse. No, for the Earth itself, it's a really, really good thing. Um, for humans, if they can catch on, it's a really, really good thing. Um, if they don't catch on, it's a really, really bad thing. Um, one of the points that I wanted to bring up that I was watching here a couple months back, I want to say it's still in the still in 2019 um, I was allowed to catch a glimpse of world leaders um, getting called out for making a joke about the US president and you know this is kind of an, an interesting thing because there I know politically speaking we, we try to let every country do its own thing and and we try our best to kind of handle things as they go. Um, you know, all of our countries really do rely on each other. The more and more globally connected we become, I almost feel like when I saw that, my heart really, really, really sunk. And I saw, I saw those threads on the shift go that negative, that, that un, I don't want to say negative because people tend to let their mind go a different way. I want to say that unprosperous, that not so fruitful path really got sick because nobody really wants to call anybody out right now. Nobody wants to sit down with this man or with any other world leader for that matter and go, listen, we as a global community are watching you take something that used to be halfway decent, at least functional, and are doing such harm. It, it, it's so funny, because watching those world leaders giggle, it almost feels like that's the whole theme anymore, is, oh yeah, they're, they're doing something that hurts everybody, but it's not affecting me. Or yeah, I'm getting does. something yeah. out of it. Or I'm getting something out of this, so I'm going, or I believe, I'm getting something out of this personally, so I'm gonna encourage this behavior. This is really that me, 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 me behavior. Whatever's going on globally is because of this me behavior. What am I getting out of this? What is my benefit? I was listening to someone, it was when I was in Colorado, I was listening on a conversation last year, and the older gentleman kind of rubbed his head and he was talking to a friend of his. I had come across some bad luck. Ironically, I had really mixed luck that trip. I had really good luck and I had really bad luck. There was no in between, but this older gentleman was sitting there while I was pouting for myself. He was talking to his friend and he said, you know what, I remember when we used to vote, it used to be because we wanted something better for the country, not because some individual, and I'm replacing his words to be a little bit more politically correct, but because some individual promised me something because technically that's bribery and I don't want to be bribed into, into doing something because then if it doesn't work then I'm out and I thought you know that's really kind of cool thinking and it really did apply to, to what I was going through at the time but when we start voting or doing or reacting or behaving on the mentality of what am I getting out of it what is it in it for me and then we have the balls to get mad because it didn't benefit us individually. Too bad. However, if you work on a global scale, on even just a community scale, I mean, like if your neighbor turned that vacant area into an, a mixed fruit orchard where they had, you know, peaches, apples, pears, cherries, whatever would grow in that area, and you turned your tiered front lawn into a garden, and you know some other neighbors turned theirs into something that was edible too, and you guys all traded, you guys would still get the benefit of the fruit of your labors and then some. If we voted more on a, what is healthy for everyone? I've asked you basically if this is a ET related thing. You're kind of wishy-washy on that. Or are you? Or are you going to come um, out and say it's ET related? The thing is, is that it is ET related, but it's human. It, it's kind of like I handed you the thing. ET handed us the thing. And then in our own stupidity, we, we activated it. Okay, so it was it, 
it was given to us as not quite break glass in the case of emergency. But yeah, when you start screwing up with the planet, uh, this is going to be activated. Would you say that yeah. more? Okay. So we were given this thing, to, uh, like a little fire alarm, so or smoke detector, basically. Yeah. This, this is a smoke detector. It's gone off, and we got to yeah. get our, our collective poop together. There are other things coming, aren't there, Skeeter? Yes. What are they? Corvid is not the worst of what's going to be coming. If we continue focusing on a me society, a lot of people's fears of having a fear-based society, a controlled society, we're getting ready to watch some societal political circumstances crash and fall. Democracy is going to be greatly challenged. It's going to open up. We talk about the end of empires, but that doesn't mean everybody is in agreement on that. People still want to control the world. So we are going to be seeing a rise in that thinking. With the me society, we are going to see a lot more people homeless. We are going to see a major crash. I'm kind of giggling on my end. I'm like, oh, housing is getting ready to crash. I'm going to hold off on buying a home for at least five years. I've I've done the math. I'm going to hold off on buying a home for five years because <laughs> in five years, I'll be able to afford any home I want. I don't think people realize their greed is actually going to cause a major, major fallout. People are already kind of joking about, you know, we wished it would be the 1920s again. And the 1920s, there was plague. There was the, the fall of the stock market. We had the Dust Bowl. Yeah, we're kind of getting a revisit of that because it's time for a check-in. It's kind of like, um, hello, have you evolved? No. But what people don't realize is that the ante goes up each and every single time. I mean, in the 1820s when this happened, yeah, there was a lot of death and we didn't have the medical to fight it then, but we also didn't have the infrastructure to lose with it. In the 1920s, we had the infrastructure to lose. We had some decent political leaders in place to kind of help smooth things out. We had a war going on at the time, so that made it a little bit hard for world leaders to get along and think on a global level. But right now, we're technically not at war. We have global leaders who can be talking to each other on a global level going, okay, um, we get it. You're this individual, but your shit is, oh, pardon, um, your stuff is affecting my stuff. Could we either offer you a hand or could we help you not be in this position anymore? Um, I know some people don't necessarily like the idea of that because we don't want other countries affecting our ability to choose our world leaders and I completely agree with that because that's what prevents a global hierarchy. But we also do need to think on a global level because we're no longer just a country across the ocean. We should honestly be better situated globally to face this, to stop it in its tracks. But instead, because we are in such a me thinking and not a we thinking, it's really, really starting to hurt people. And if we keep at this, you're not going to be able to just have my house. You're going to have to take on borders in order to pay your rent or your mortgage. The tent towns in Seattle, those are going to those are going to grow. I don't think people realize how bad this is going to be. And until they stop thinking in their mind, well, until it happens to me, it doesn't matter. Tough. I mean, I've talked to you about you about this before. One of the big things about the shift, one of the other big things, there's so many little pieces, but there's some big pieces. Everyone wants to go back to the Bible or their religion or whatever. One of the things that I've told people before is that if you look at the Ten Commandments, not as rules, not as commandments, unfortunately, I think the Ten Commandments have been warped by humans and their me attitude. It's a guideline for how a society should work, because if we as a society are taking care of each other, you should have no need to covet thy neighbor's belongings. If 
is we are doing everything that we have as a society to take care of each other. There should be no need to murder thy neighbor. <laughs> there really isn't. In fact, as a society, if one of us kills someone, we should be going to that person's side going, okay, where did we fail? Did we not give you the medical treatment? Did we not give you the housing, the home, the, the what happened? What happened as a society that we failed this individual that they felt the need to kill someone in order to survive? If you feel the need to, to break any of those commandments, that should tell you that as a society, we failed somewhere. We are talking to Skeeter Wellhouse, and we have been talking to Skeeter Wellhouse. She is a psychic medium. She is very, very connected, and uh, we've been talking about something that we've been discussing for the longest time, the shift, and what it means to humanity as we go forward. And that's what I kind of want to last a little bit here, Skeeter. I know I've kept you on the phone for a long time, but the shift itself, where it's going and we talk, we keep coming back and forth to this thing where it's a good thing, but it's a, it's a good thing for the planet itself. It's a good thing for humanity. It's just getting through this part of it and awakening and trying to reassure people that it's going to be okay. Just relax and kind of get along with other people. You know, we've talked about this off air before and dealing with other things that are coming that are a little more out of the ordinary. You know, I'll just throw that out, that reptilian thing. <laughs> what, whether you want to talk about that or not. All I can um, say is I told you so. <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, the re I know, but uh, not specifically that, but the reason they're taking people away. You that, probably don't want to talk about that. <laughs> no, because that's such a that's such an interesting thing because there's there's several camps in that group and there's several reasons why that that in and of itself would be its own show because there are people who will be benefiting from it. There will be people who are not benefiting from it and there are those who it, it, it's kind of a gray area. <laughs> it's, it's a gray area for the black reptilians, but it's uh, basically, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it at that. It, it's, it's not, it, it kept me awake for two nights, <laughs> literally. I, I couldn't sleep for two days after I was told, and I wasn't told by you. You confirmed it, which no. another person confirmed, which another person confirmed, and I was like, holy crap. You know, to serve man, it's a cookbook. It's, um, but the reason why and things like that, and, and the re yeah, it's, and it's coming. So when we talk about the shift, when do you see this calming? Well, the thing is, uh, it's, it's already being tested out. It's already seeing little things disappear here and there. Um, I worked on when a you say, when, when, you, when you say little things disappearing, what are you talking about? Um, humans. Just kind of vanishing. Yeah. Okay. I oh, we are going to get into the reptilians. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that that is really big right now is. So it was really weird when I did my road trip this year, and I've 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 done road trips my entire life. This year was really fascinating because I'd pull into a truck stop and I'd go to the bathroom, do my toiletries and things to get ready for the night sleepover. And there would be a warning sign talking about sex trafficking, being aware not to open your car door for anybody. If you were in the area or if you needed help or if you yourself were in the process of being kidnapped and needed help, here was a way to get a hold of someone's attention at the truck stop. There's a lot of people who have just been vanishing off the planet already. A lot of people blame sex trafficking. A lot of people say, well, this person was crazy and they became homeless and then they disappeared. There's a lot of reasons why people are just vanishing or at least that humans have rationalized why they are vanishing. Um, unfortunately, sex trafficking, homelessness, these are real reasons. So they're logical. They explain because they actually are happening, unfortunately, and they really shouldn't be. But these create windows of opportunity for other things to happen. I've read a couple of horror uh, murder novels, and I've even written a couple stories myself, where the serial killer goes after People nobody cares about if they disappear. Homeless people, prostitutes. Yeah. Nobody cares if they vanish. Well. But they've been, well, okay, let me no, put it this way. Because I, I, I worked on the picked-in file where he killed up to about 70 sex trade workers. Yeah. And the, I think the general public 
perceives that nobody cares, but the people who are investigating it really cared. No, they no do. Matter what the families say, yeah. But for the for the masses, it's not for the masses. It's not a big deal. But again, this oh, is a yeah. me we situation. If we as a society actually cared about everybody in our society, then if one person went missing and it doesn't matter what their status was, then we would be upset. We'd be like, um, "Where's George? Well, George was homeless. Why was George homeless? Who forgot to take care of George? You know what I mean?" Societal-wise, we're not worried about it. Individually, we get a little worried. The human on a human level is better than the humans on a global level. But the thing is, though, is that these situations create gaps of opportunity to see what we can get away with, what they can get away with. One of the things that absolutely breaks my heart is the number of indigenous people who vanish every year. And it never makes the news. If it does, it's rare. Uh, yeah, it's um, we we have a full on task force in Canada now as a result of actually the Picton murders on missing and um, missing and murdered Indigenous people. Yeah, it's staggering. But it's these things that have created a window of opportunity for those things to happen okay. and not really be notice you know one of the things I, I i want to come back to the first nations people the indigenous population who have traditionally been a higher vibration and being a what awake we'll call it we'll call it the awake people are are those who aren't going to be affected or my understanding was wasn't going to be affected by the shift we have a number of these people being taken even though they're higher vibration so is it that they're those who are are removing people from this planet aren't really caring about the vibrations of the people or are they or this specific group of people being taken are not up to the vibration of the rest of the family or the clan or so let's put it this way there's a lot of there's a lot of players on the field right now there's a lot of individuals um, both groups and other that have a lot of stakes in the game. So, if you have a group of people who still remember what we're supposed to be doing, how we're supposed to be living, who, despite everything that we have done to them, still go, we remember the old ways, we still practice the old ways, despite everything you've done to us, we still hold our our ancestors, our gods, our 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 teachers, the spirit world, all the world in great honor and still despite everything attempt to live on that higher vibration. And your goal is to bring the world down to its lowest vibration possibly. Who are you going to target? Okay, so these this these beings who are trying to push us over the edge are targeting the higher vibration people. Yes. Well, that kind of sucks for the higher vibration people who are trying to right now ride out the shift and all the other stuff that you know and are trying the to fix the shift and be a place for other people to come to. Yeah, that's not fun. Yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, I was kind of hoping all the higher vibration people were going to stay. But if there is a force or energy that would like to, again, it's thinking on a me level, not a we level, me, who are they going to erase in order to guarantee that their me stays in place? Now, would that be uh, somebody from outside the planet then? Not necessarily, although if, let's put it this way, some of the chess pieces can move themselves, others need to be moved. So if I was a government, um, you know, the, the obscure government agency that kind of the New World Order kind of bizarre group, and I say, you know what, uh, those people have to go and I can send my reptilians off to harvest them. Yep. And I don't okay. think that's necessarily a hundred percent reptilian. I think that's, I think that's the group that we that we 
call reptilian the naughty reptilians. <laughs> the black ones? Yeah, the ones that everyone's scared of. The black reptilians, then. I call them black ones. Yeah. Because I think they're black. The other ones are kind of gold and green. Or green. Yeah. Or mixed. Those are the ones that just kind of hang out with everybody. And, and actually, there's hybrid humans and... Uh, yeah, the gold I think green the, ones are the ones that abducted me that one time. Yeah, but they let you go. They didn't like. Uh, no, they did you know, let me start go. chopping onions and put you in a pot. It's. Uh, it's the I other think they're one. the ones. Yeah, those were the ones that were. They were basically telling you not to like tr- switch on a number of people. Like you were doing the regressions into their missing time with ETs, and aren't those the ones that because hey Skeeter, you got to like back off for a bit. Yeah, they were telling yeah. me to be careful about who I told yeah. what. Well, you, yeah, and. Uh, I think those are the, and I'm kind of, I get the vibe that too, is all the UFOs that I've seen when I was out in Sedona and the little squadrons, little groups of flying around. I keep thinking those are going to be reptilians too. Those would be the more, the reptilian ones. But you got to realize the reptilians aren't the only ones, well, the good reptilians, they're not the only ones that are playing on this field. Oh yeah, I think uh, we're we're a, a nice little petri dish of stuff going on in this planet, and everybody's got their fingers in it. I mean, one of the things is, is that I've I've got a book that's been waiting to come out, waiting to come out, and it just keeps getting lost in the shuffle because it really explains how many players are on this planet and how that me thinking. That versus that we thinking has made Earth one of these really rare and fascinating situations. And there are so many chefs hands in this pot. It's it's really kind of cool. I mean, if you step back from it and you think about all the reasons and all the things that are here and why they're here and all the ways that they've figured out how to live and work together and then how things have, again, shifted and changed. And every time we go through one of these periods of massive shift, for the most part, we do okay. We kind of figure it out. We're really getting in a bad habit of no longer doing a Texas two-step where we take two steps forward, three steps back. We're getting more and more in a in almost a stalemate or just grabbing the rope and pulling our way as hard as we can thinking we can force it to be what we want it to be and that's not why this was created i mean there's a massive period of time that humans don't know what was going on and to be real honest that's when everything was being set up and this this isn't an accident there are some things that have evolved naturally as they were supposed to and there are some things that have been added to in hopes of making it better but the more and more this me mentality stigs in it just really kind of takes away from the magic of it all and these groups these these high vibrating groups these these ancient people i mean australia just got ripped apart by fires and so much was lost and they're they're doing their best to to rebuild and and recover under their circumstances and now they've got the covid on top of that the thing is people need to realize the shift is it's really trying to remind you of where we're from and the people who are going to go missing all the players on the field our imaginations can't even begin to touch everything that is genuinely going on and the fun thing is is that people know people are gullible conspiracy theories some of them have a a wisdom to them some of them are just smoke and mirrors to make you look over here so that you're not looking over there lots of fun lots of things to look forward to i've got um before i let you go i got a couple of questions i got i i've got to fire out here and going back to the whole reptilian thingy uh i understood that there are four three four countries that are going to be most affected that was united states china india and australia is that what you get to yes and no okay which which part is the no part (laughs) yes india and australia not as much it's yes to a degree but not for the same reasons as the U.S. and China. Yeah, I was thinking, the, I couldn't figure out Australia, but I was thinking if you actually were going to have a base here and you're used to living on a planet that's 110 degrees, northern Australia would be a good place to live and to have a base. 
above yeah. ground. Yeah, but also you got to realize Australia and India on a spiritual level are very high vibration. I mean, uh, it's, okay. No, really. I'm just thinking with yeah, I'm just thinking with the the new president of Australia right now. The 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 right the kind of the right wing shift in the country. okay. Th- don't think about the current people. Think okay. about think about the the original people. The abor oh aboriginals yeah the aborigine pe- aboriginal people would be higher vibration, but the the newcomers the Anglo this Anglo is, types. This is why I have to be very careful with Australia and India because there are things in both of those countries that are very old and were once upon a time and still are very aware of of the things that I've written in my book but can't really talk about. I really hope one day I'm given the green light on that. Okay. But you can see it in their deities. You can see it in their ancient art. You can see it in the ancient writings. You can hear it in their story time. Australia story time is a very, 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 very important thing. And there's a reason for that. And there's a reason Australia and India are both going to be kind of that mixed bag because they've still got that. Yeah. So there'll be, there'll be a good chunk of them staying in and, and a fine chunk of them leaving. Yes. Um, yeah. I, okay. I can see why it's a yes or no. A yes yeah. and no for those countries. Yes. Um. China, eh, not too much yes. United States, quite a bit of yes, and it's awakening. Yeah. If given some time. You did a, reg- a past life, a past, not a past life regression, James. Uh, we were down at Alien Con. Uh, buddy of mine, uh, Buster Johnson. Buster oh, yeah. John Stone. Buster, who, if anyone's ever been to any of the uh, Alien Cons, he's a kind of a fixture walking around. He, years ago, he took a couple of photographs with a Polaroid camera out testing it a couple of years ago, many years ago, uh, back when Polaroids were new. He was in the backyard and he saw this, he was testing it and he saw a light up in the sky, very lower light, like a, Jesus, like a UFO or it looks like a plane that's not moving. So he took a couple of pictures of it, again, just testing his Polaroid out. He, put the uh, Polaroids out in the kitchen, went off to do something, came back, pulled them out to see what they looked like, and there were handprints on them. And the handprints burnt into, um, I call burnt in, but projected into the actual photograph. And if you look at your index finger, you've got, you know, two knuckles on the index finger. These things had three. And they had fibers instead of... um, uh, would be pores. Well, Buster has since sent those off to the, the FBI who've given him a nice report saying, yeah, they are handprints. They are a living being's fingerprints, um, but they're just not human. So he lost some time and what you do, your thing. Uh, and I thought, again, this was one of those times where you, <laughs> you were visited by something off planet that said, you know, you should be kind of calming down a bit on this. But the, um, you did your thing. And he, th- this was actually a fascinating one because you went into a seizure uh, partway through this. Yep. And your partner, uh, what's her name? The uh, girl was helping you there. She called me and we, I had to press parts of your body that like into your nerve plexuses to kind of get you out of it. And um, what is it you saw? You said you, uh, the reason you went into this, you, you, you were uh, interfered with. You had an ET come in basically saying you had to stop and started shutting you down. And then a higher vibration being came in and said, leave her the hell alone. And that's how it was left. Yeah. Well, Buster comes out of this and Buster's been giving uh, has has had a lot more opening in his life since then. And I was talking to him not too long ago when he was giving uh, given a date. He asked and this was a date for, quote unquote, disclosure and disclosure, meaning when is the government going to come out and tell us that UFOs exist? and are real and we have ETs walking around. Well, he asked that and he was given 222. Since then, he has got February 2022. Yep. And it wasn't that the government was going to come out and say, hey, you know, just we want to tell you the UFOs are here. It was going to be the other way around. The UFOs were going to get showing up and going, yeah, we've been here for a while. Yeah. This is what we're doing. Does that date resonate with you at all? Oh, yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to that date. Okay. Because my other psychic friend who 
was talking about the reptilians taking people to the meat market (laughs) when she was given the vision and uh, put into like basically sitting in her van with her kids when you were watching like people in your neighborhood being loaded up into these big clear boxes sprayed with an antiviral and taken off planet how old were your kids and she said only a couple of years older than they are now and then we both paused and went oh crap a couple of years older like two years older and she goes oh yeah i guess that's about it and then marianne morgan bless her she says trump will be reelected." and i said oh that's going to be interesting and she said yeah but he's not going to make it through the entire four years about the two one and a half two year mark something's going to change but he, he just disappears like there's something he's she can't see him as a president then yeah which is a whole other issue we, you know which is like okay so but it's all aiming at like 222 a whole other here's one to, to drive people completely nuts marianne morgan's going okay the antichrist is here and i went what what where in my room she goes no no he's here he's actually working quite quite closely in government right now <laughs> so she disclosed who I said, is it so-and-so? And she goes, yeah, how did you know? And I said, ah, oh, wild guess, because his business in whatever city it is, the address was 666 and all these other things. And he's kind of this little shadow person within the, the Trump government. And when I said, oh, great. Now, wouldn't that be interesting if Pence d- dropped out or some reason he's not vice president and the GOP bring this guy up as uh, VP and then Trump leaves in two halfway through his term and all of a sudden we've got the Antichrist as the <laughs> president of the US and she said oh yeah that would be interesting wouldn't it that's all she said I should have her back on and talk about that that's kind of bizarre do you have any uh, input into that at all all I can say is that's why I'm really holding my breath as the next <laughs> gift, next big knot in the web is coming up and why I'm really looking at people going we have to think on a we level not a me level because Trump really 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 appeals to me people yeah Um, he's yeah he's he is the ultimate me person he is that's why when things went the way they did with our recent event here in the united states about his impeachment i was watching our republicans all the me people going you do not understand what's going on or if even scarier you do understand what's going on and when that not went and unfurled itself I was like well this is gonna be fun and then here we are with COVID-19 and I'm like oh you're right on time Um, (laughs) and I think that's about the same time you started going so Skeeter what about this and I'm like welcome to the shift James yeah Um, all your answers were like welcome to the shift I'm like damn it you and Marianne Morgan (laughs) telling me to pack up like (laughs) pack everything up into a you know, get my my pantry loaded, and you telling me welcome to the shift. We used to always talk about this being around. Actually, we did talk about it at one point uh, a few years back. It being uh, 2020, 2022, and then we jumped to 2040. And okay, you won't have to worry about it. I'll be really old and gray by then. And not that I'm not gray now. The, uh, the but that would be uh, you know it's still another 20 years away. And now all of a sudden, crap, it's only two years away. Or it's it started and well, actually, it started back when we were talking about it back in 2014. Yeah, the shift was starting. We were already dealing with severe weather. We were talking about things that were going to affect us globally. We talked about you know almost like the, what the hurricane did to um, Puerto Rico, and then after that, we talked about that as being an example of what's going to happen to us all if we don't get our collective poop in a bag. Because yeah. if you know if all of a sudden they shut off the power one day, how am I going to go to the store and buy something? You're probably not going to be at the store. You're going to be you're not be selling anything. You're going to be at home with your kids. I can't actually this money at the bank my check no longer gets automatically deposited every month how do i support my family i'm going to have to see what i have at home and then go out and trade it to see what you have at home if you'll let me in your driveway without blowing me away that's what happened in puerto rico they they basically all of a sudden electricity got shut off and it wasn't like oh it's a blackout for two days it was like a month so how are you going to get from point A to point B? Like, there was a guy at a gas station. He was selling gas, but you needed cash because obviously the credit cards and interact didn't work. Puerto Rico was a test. Exactly. Are we going to stand test. behind it and be a we society and take care of it? Or are we going to be a me, it's not mine, not my problem? And what happened with Puerto Rico? It became not my problem. It's not me. Yeah, not me. Here, catch this. It's uh, some 
paper towels. Good catch. Yeah, it's it's interesting. And at the end of this, as, as we sign out today, what would you like to tell everybody? It's not about you. It's about us. The sooner people catch on to it's about us, it's about all of us. It's it's your it's not just your your direct children or your direct spouse or girlfriend or or that immediate inner circle. It is me and James across the border. It is me and the people I care for in Ireland and England. And it is we as a global community. This is literally the best time to go. It's us. It's not them. It's not name any country. It's not them versus us. It is us, period. We, the sooner you can get past, how is this going to affect my bank account? How is this going to make me happy? How is this going to affect me directly? And start thinking about how is this going to affect the community? The sooner you can still flip things around. I will tell you that at this point in the shift, there is a lot of stuff that is getting ready to unfold. We can't stop it all, but I can tell you the really, really bad stuff. We can still do a, you know, a sharp left or a sharp right and buffer along the edge of it. But unless we switch from that me thinking, what is in it for me only, and go to a we thinking, really thinking as a society, what can we do for each other to get each other out of this? This means people no longer thinking about their bank accounts, actually getting out of greed. Greed is one of the deadly sins. People have forgotten that. There's some truth to that. I mean, I'm I'm pagan as hell. I'm sitting here going with my deities going, woohoo! But there is some truth in all religions. Do unto others as you would wish for them to do unto you. Period. No ifs, no ands, no buts, no loopholes, no my God versus your God. This is, I am looking at my brothers and my sisters globally and going, what can I do to help raise us all up together? That's the only way this shift isn't going to kick our ass. That is the only way to avoid 222. 222 is a countdown. And again, let's go back to the very first page, the very first time we talked about this. The future is fragile. It's incredibly fragile. And it can change. It can change. I mean, I've told you before, I believe in the Oedipus theory that I've come up with for telling future predicaments. Um, For those of you who don't know, Oedipus, his dad went to Apollo's sacred city to talk to the oracles there. And they told him that he would have a son who would grow up to take over his country, kill him, marry his wife, technically his mom, and kill everybody and ruin the entire country. The king had a choice in that moment. In the story, he chooses to send Oedipus away, to kill Oedipus, basically. The person who took Oedipus away felt bad for the baby. The baby was eventually found, raised by another kingdom, came back, killed, basically fulfilled the prophecy. However, if Oedipus' father, and and whenever you are given a a glimpse of the future, you have many options to choose. Oedipus' father honestly could have said, you know what, I'm going to raise his son and be the best king possible so that my son has no reason to kill me. I'm going to introduce him to his mom so that he doesn't hook up with his mom and knock her up. I'm going to create a kingdom that my son will be proud to be king of and not want to destroy it because he'll have something to lose by destroying his own really great kingdom. To be real honest, the minute anyone tells you something about the future, they are giving you one of these threads that I see on the web where we are literally at a crossroads. I work at the crossroads a lot. A lot of the deities, a lot of the energies that I work with are at the crossroads. When I give you information about the future, and James is kind of learning, I'm cheeky about this, I'm giving you an opportunity to think about how can you make this work for the best? Not what can you get out of this or how can you avoid your fate, but how can I spin this to make it the best possible outcome for the highest good of all? Again, me, no, we, yes. My friend, the psychic who I've actually interviewed a few times, who talked to me about this whole reptilian thing, and I said, well, why are they taking us? And they said, because we, we had one job. 
there was one rule the golden rule do unto others as we would have them do unto us and we screwed up and yep. the deal was you know we get into the whole theories about who was you know the, you know we talk about the old testament things and how it was written and what stories where the stories came from maybe the uh, the serpent in the garden of eden, eden was just a reptilian <laughs> and uh, and basically like draco and like uh, when you hear story time and the aboriginals in australia you know they talk about the great snake the great serpent is where everyone originated it's yeah you know, we in india the serpents and the reptile reptile type deities there it's something that goes back and it's uh we screwed up it's just getting back on track becoming one with our neighbors one within our humanity yeah. even though we're all a bunch of mixed up yahoos but, well uh, all i know is co-op and anyone who knows who that is has become very prevalent in my home Who's the rainbow that? Coat is a goddess of the South American, Aztec, Mayan, Incan societies. Um, I want to say she is Mayan specifically, but I may be wrong. My daughter knows better than I do because that's who she decided to channel through one night. My daughter has not done research. She just kind of popped through and was like, oh, hi, here I am. She's been getting a very, very strong foothold in our home. But she is a mother. She is a protector of childbirth. She protects those who die in childbirth. Her name literally means skirt of snake. She is a very strong reptilian. I know Jorgen Minder, who was wrapped around the earth, is there is not a culture out there that does not have a reptile in its mythology. And people need to be aware that these mythologies, there is some truth to them. These aren't, yeah. humans have crap imagination. We can only tell you what we've seen. Yep. Somewhere and along the to, way, we saw that. And we base it on the knowledge that we're, we have at this specific time in history. So, yep. yeah, when so I think I was talking to Tui Snyder about a UFO incident back in Texas, back in the 1800s, the people who drew it, all drew it like balloons. Or yep. do it like something that, you know, a flying stagecoach or something, something that they had in related to in their day to day life. And that's how they tried to express it in drawings. Yep. And go back, go back 2000, 3000 years. And that's how they would have, they would have had to taken something from day to day life and express it that way. Yep. What a fascinating time we live in and what a fascinating way to describe these things. Skeeter, thank you very much for dropping by. It's been enlightening. It's been creepy. <laughs> it's been enlighteningly creepy. Uh, and it, it confirms a lot of other things that, that are going to be coming up on the show in the next little while. I'm going to be bringing back a few other people with your intuition and your connections to the other side to drop by. And, uh, I, you know, off air, I've talked to them and they're all saying the same thing that you're saying. And it it's it's kind of and it's not one of these kind of weird little woo woo shows that I put on and they'll go, OK, I'll talk to this psychic and I'm, I'm going to double check to see what Skeeter said to see was true it's just no you guys are all saying the same thing no and we it's, are and you don't really know each other which is kind of freaking me out and yeah. you very seldom say this out loud so i appreciate you coming on and talking to me about it particularly the whole et thing and on what could be uh, happening with that and again if we can get our global shit together, uh, maybe that we can push that off a few more decades. At least and, another hundred uh, years. Good, another hundred years would be good uh, before we all get called back to whatever little planets we're from, um, or we'll uh, find out who left. And I'm gonna have you back on. We should talk about hybrids and things like that too, and how it's affected the planet. Uh, we 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 could talk well, obviously for hours because we already have. Uh, my hour and twenty minute show has gone what two hours now. So we can, I'll I'll let you get back to. You know, going raiding your neighbor's pea garden or whatever it is you're going to do. Or, uh, um, we're actually getting ready to do some um, candle magic on a global scale. And I don't know if you've, I've ever sent you pictures of my candles. No. Is it something, it's risque? I, they should arrive in a brown paper envelope or something? No, no, um, no. <laughs> okay. But no, Alrighty. We're we're setting intentions today to help start 
waking everyone up. Excellent. That is what we're supposed to be doing. We are supposed to be touching other people and leaving it for them, pointing it out to them, leaving the silver bullet on the counter and riding off into the sunset. And if it's meant to be, they will hit that switch. Yep. And uh, more and more, it's becoming meant to be. And those people are now going off and doing the same thing for others and helping people uh, wake up to what's, what's going on and what's coming and get their head out of their their little all about me ass again thank you very much skeeter skeeter wellhouse are you still doing readings at all i am getting ready to start readings again they are getting ready to take my time out off my time out wasn't a punishment it was a we need to pull you back to school and teach you some new things so i'm about to graduate i should actually say so it'll be a lot of fun i will be doing readings probably again starting next month cool would you would you do a couple for me every so often for free for my listener I would be more than happy to excellent I will uh, advise them that it's coming back and uh, I know there's a couple there that really want to talk to you and they're giddy they'll be well they will be giddy that you're going to be coming back online okay Skeeter Skeeter Wellhouse please uh, have be safe with your family wash your hands in fact wash all your neighbors hands um don't touch your face with your neighbor's hands and <laughs> do all sorts of cool stuff have fun with your candle thing and bless everyone around you that's coming to you for advice and hopefully they're going to get switched on to of course they would actually they wouldn't i don't think people would be introduced to you if they're not being switched on it's just i think the way things go uh, we attract Those the right ones need me come to me yes yeah, so those who don't send you bills all right <laughs> we'll talk soon again skeeter wells thanks very much for coming by watching you while you sleep all right that's it let's roll and hey 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 let's be careful out there Like a pack of angry